All right, everybody. How y'all doing out there? Uh, it's Joey and Nate back here with you. Dixie Doggers TV podcast. Uh, we're back. We've got a little change of pace. Uh, we're, we're back in the in our studio. Also, otherwise known as the Fur Shed. Yes, trapping indeed. Shed. Yes, indeed. Been remodeling it. He's re- Yeah, Nate's been doing a lot of remodeling. He even conned me into doing a little bit of work. I don't yeah. really like that stuff. But, <laughs> I mean, he's, you know, done a little bit of stuff here to try to, I mean, it already had a, a bunch of aesthetics to it, but mainly it's just getting everything organized and having to move stuff around. I know y'all don't give a damn about all that, but first off, we want to say thank you. It's, uh, you know, we first started this thing. Uh, I'm a, I'm an older guy. I, I mean, I, I'm not real big into technology and all that shit. And so I was kind of skeptical of, of doing this and, you know, Nate told me, he's like, you know, if you, cause people call me all the time and text me and message me and all that stuff. So if I wanted to reach a, a wide audience and, you know, pass along what little bit of knowledge I have, which it ain't much, you know, so you, you taking a chance if you ask me anything, you know, doing it on these platforms. I mean, since we've started, this will be episode 19. All right. Uh, we started out you know, doing it all just hunt, mostly just all hunting stuff, but we go to bait pens and stuff too. So, uh, we got with our friends at hog dog nation podcast and, uh, collaborated a little bit. And so the last few times we went to the bait pens, we've got with some of those guys and sat down and done some interviews and, you know, a little time we call beer time where we're all, you know, we sit around, drink cold beer and just talk about dogs and the history of uh, the bait pen, the history of the sport, of Bain, the history of the sport of hog dogging, uh, history of hog dogs and bloodlines and uh, different tracking systems and trucks and stuff they like to hunt out of, you know, just a multitude of things. And but uh, I mean, on on Spotify, we've we've passed a, a thousand downloads. We did that a little a while back, so we're we're coming up on a couple thousand now. Yeah, soon to be two thousand. Yeah, I think we're so, right at eighteen hundred. Right so now. let's let's try to make that happen. You know, when you when you listen or you watch or anything, make sure you subscribe. Uh, make sure that you follow us on on Spotify, so that way you can be updated. So, you know, when the next episode's coming out, that way you guys can listen and pass it on. And I know some of these are lengthy. And, you know, after 45 minutes or an hour, you're like, uh, uh, and I understand that. It's no big deal, you know. Uh, main thing is, you know, listen, get all you can't listen to it in, in, in spurts. I like to listen to podcasts when I'm driving. Yeah. You know, like if, if we got a trip, you know. But, yeah. uh, dude, we are in 10 countries is what, it, what we've been uh we got on some of our statistics and i mean you got country where people are listening in australia new zealand canada uk ireland poland germany denmark estonia and over 300 different cities uh coast to coast coast to coast pretty much every state canada uh i, I mean every everywhere that you can think of somebody has listened Two at us, <laughs> at least one time. They you can know? speak English. They've listened. <laughs> yeah, and well, and some of them might not even be able to speak. English. I don't know. I don't care if you speak English or not. If, if we're talking dogs, and that's a kind of a. It's like the language of love. Everybody knows something about dogs, I guess. Uh, so, like I said, thank y'all. We really appreciate it. Uh, there's, you know, we got con- different kinds of content. This is going to be about. Uh, it's going going back to the hunting part here on this episode, but. Uh, if you guys can think of any topics or any kind of content that you would want to see that's related to what we do, uh, drop a comment in the video or email us, however you want to do it. It don't matter. Any way you can get a hold of us. I don't care if it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Uh, hit us up and let us know. Uh, we, we also want to thank a few people like Crockett Taxidermy. Lynn Farms, All American Hunting and Hounds, uh, White Tails of Alabama, Scent Balls, Right Outdoor Company, Two A Gun Works and Coatings, Hog Dog Nation, Jake Locano, Mark Bannister, uh, all the guys putting on the the hog bays, all the guys that work in the pen, all the judges, uh, the people that let us use their property to hunt to do all these things. There's a list. There's so many people. I don't. I mean, I. I it's not that I don't know who it is. It's 
it would be like 10 podcasts all in itself just for me yeah. saying thank you. And uh, one of these days I might do that, but I, but I know you guys want to hear something, that, you know, something other than me just rambling on. Yeah. So, and including that, if there's like a certain type of hunting you want to cover, if you want us to go, they don't have to be to just more, hogs. Yeah, if you want to do more go to ground, more coyote hunting, more bobcat hunting, whatever, we can always hook it up on the computer and do a computer interview or yep. something like that. If there's some people that you know, hey, if you know a buddy that's real big running these kind of dogs and you think he would be a wealth of knowledge, let us know and we'll hit him up or get us connected and somehow we'll try to do an interview. Hell, we'll drive out there, fly out there. We'll, we'll, do we'll whatever. get in touch if they'll – if they'll talk, we'll record them, basically. <laughs> in the short time that we've been doing this, I, I don't know how many miles we've logged, honestly. I mean, thousands, literally thousands and thousands of miles. We're not scared to jump and go. We only and, got one uh, more state for the southeast, and that's Florida. We yeah. Have, we ain't recorded anything in Florida yet. So if y'all know, no, somebody in Florida, know somebody in Florida that wants to talk about some stuff, uh, yeah. let us know. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> uh, like I said, it doesn't – I mean, we do a lot of other things – than you know other than just running hog dogs you know which most people do you know which i know there are some guys that's all they do is hog dogs and that's that's and great that's hey I that's, that's fine. Dogs, i don't care what they do but there's a lot of us like what the topic of this right now there's a lot of us that during certain seasons it's really hard for us to run our hog dogs our biggest issue is deer season uh which we we deer hunt yeah uh not I'm a favorite. I, well, I mean, it's my favorite part's eating. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's one of those deals. I, I'm not big into just sitting in a, a, a box blind it or standing up. trapping time. <laughs> yeah, but we trap stuff. But that's what I'm saying. The importance of running the hog dogs during deer season. A lot of deer hunters, they, they don't want you running dogs at all during deer season. Uh, but then they're complaining nonstop about the hogs and the problem that the hogs are causing. The hogs are, you know, they come in and eat all the mass crops. They come in and tear up your green fields. They come in and tear up your corn feeders or, or whatever you're doing. Uh, you know, if they're in there at that time, hogs don't just stay in one place forever. So if they're in there doing it, tearing your stuff up, then, you know, we need to be able to work together because, and also you need to know all your state, you know, your state hunting laws and regulations because in the state of Alabama, we can, we can hunt during deer season. We can run hog yep. dogs during the daytime. You're technically not allowed to run at night during deer season. That's why we have a special nighttime season. Well, we got, I got all this. Yeah, we're going to touch base on all that, but Nate's 100%. Uh, there's a lot of us that, that run at night. I'm guilty of, you know. We have a special nighttime season, but during deer season, I just, I don't hardly, I don't, I don't know that we hardly ever even hunt unless it's just, uh, a big, a big private place that uh, yeah. that nobody is deer hunting. I don't, yeah. I don't want to take a chance of somebody shooting one of my dogs. There's, there's been a couple times where like a club has unanimously agreed, like, hey, let's yeah, let's take it, let's pick a day and let some people come in here and kill some hogs. Yeah, they need because it. I don't know. I don't know why all clubs don't do that. You know, like, which I understand. There's some that are like big, big time trophy clubs, and it's a pay to play deal. That's a different deal. You know, that's a different thing. Yeah, but uh. It's like, see, right, I got, I, I went and I, I made some notes. It, you know, legally in Alabama, we can run dogs during the daytime. A lot of people think that we can't, but we can. And a lot of people think that we can only run at night, but it's exactly the opposite. Only Our rules state feral swine, there's no limit. The season is from May 9th through August 31st, dogs only. Maybe hunted nineteen nighttime hours. No firearms allowed. When you're out hunting during the summer, and you've got two bay dogs, and you go in there and shoot that hog, that's illegal. But now, if it's daylight, you're good. The only time you can't hunt during at the day, night. That's yeah. what I'm saying. At night, there is no closed daytime season unless it's during turkey season, because you're not allowed to run dogs in the state of Alabama after 3 a.m. during turkey season. Well, that's a that's a given, a hundred percent. And you can't run at night then, so all 24 hours is gone during turkey season. And I've heard from other people, the game wardens tell them this and that. And I'm like, hey, you know, game warden says you can do it. That's between you and him. But I know between I've you heard so much of that junk. In the written law, 
Now, I've read. I've heard so many people it's... say, well, my, my uncle said the game warden told him. Yeah. Look, that yeah, that shit might have been 25 years ago is when your uncle or your papa or whoever's talking about it. Get up to date on what it is right now because the laws are changing every year. Our laws have changed yeah. literally changed every year. Time season. Last year it was May 1st or May 2nd. Yep. I don't recall, but I know they moved it to May 9th. Mm-hmm. They cut our season down a little bit. I May think. 23rd. Yeah. But anyway, they yeah they cut it down because they opened up another nighttime season for thermal. Yes. Which starts immediately after deer season. So you can have a thermal or night vision optic with a with a weapon and oh. you can kill hogs from February the 11th through November 1st. This is not something that I'm doing. This is written directly straight out of the Alabama Game and Fish rule book. Uh, coyote, feral swine, special nighttime season, private and leased lands, February 11th through November 1st, thermal night vision. Must have valid nighttime permits. I think it's $15. No dogs during turkey season. That That's just period. Yeah. Even if you have private land, you know, um, that, that's one of those deals where people's like, well, it's my land. And I, and, and I understand that. It but, is your land. Yeah, it is your land. So just because it's your land, in the rule, it, 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 true enough, in the rule book, it says, you know, it, but right here it says private and lease lands. It gives you a date. But so the date is only good on private and lease lands when you want it to be, is what some people are saying. They're like, well, it's turkey season. I can hunt on my own property. Um, no, I mean, that rule, the I rule book. a store. Yeah, you can do whatever. I'm That's what I'm saying. To. So <laughs> just because you own that property. So that means that you don't have to abide by state laws and regulations. So if you want to shoot a deer at night just because you own the property, is that okay? Well, shit, no. The thing about it is people, they contract it how they want to, and they twist it to make it fit their format in life. You know, to make it sound whatever works for them. They make it the best for them. So just make sure that you're up to par, especially here in, in our state, because, like I said, our rules and regulations are always changing, especially when it comes to more nuisance type animals. There's yeah, there's yeah. just so many gray areas. It's like you, I know, just since I've been in middle school, the coon season's changed three or four times. Yeah, now there's no season; it's all year round. You can kill coons any day. Whereas, yeah, all, or I know when I was in elementary school, it was only like I think it was. November through February or October through February? Yep. It was long, October. Like 15th through for a long time. February 28th for a long time. And then they opened it more. And it's, it, in Alabama, things change quite, it, quite a bit. When it comes well, to yeah, laws. it changes constantly. That's I what I'm saying. for everybody else's state. Never, never been there. <laughs> well, we, I've been to, we've been to some, but. Yeah, I don't keep up with their laws. I just. Usually if if we're going to a state, that's what we do. We try to make sure that we're up to par on everything and go with that. But our, for where we live at, I don't know. I just don't want to. I don't want to get a ticket. I don't want to get a reputation. I don't want to have somebody saying, "Well, I don't want those guys to come over and hunt on my property because yeah. they got caught doing this or caught doing that." I don't want to get any. There's just impounded. There's just too many. There's too many variables. It's just too much of a risk especially during this time of year, during deer season, especially deer gun season, uh, because there's a lot of people, they think that that dog is trespassing on their property. And that dog, you know, it's your, your hog dog or your coon dog or whatever, any dog. You know, you, you can't shoot a hunting dog with a tracking collar on it. Number one, you ain't supposed to shoot any dogs. But, you know, unless it's, threatening you or your livestock or your family or something like that. That's at least that's what it is here. But just because the dog crossed the creek and was running a deer or hog, a squirrel, a coon or whatever, and does not give somebody else the right to shoot that dog. Now, yeah, it can mess your hunt up. I understand that. Yeah. Get pissed off. You can piss and moan and raise hell and bitch about it. That's fine. You know, yeah. that, that's all well and good. If somebody has a dog that, that they care about, and it got a three hundred dollar tracking collar on it. Chances are they're going to have a phone number on it. Mm-hmm. Call that phone number, and get that person to come over there, and they're going to be looking for that dog anyway. Yeah, I think uh, I think it was last year, it might have been the year before last, when we got uh, a new dog trespassing law, so to speak. Yeah. And I believe the Alabama Game and Fish said 
what you're supposed to do, and it's a uh, three strike basically. Yes. So if you have a dog that comes onto your property, you call the game warden. The game warden comes out there. The dog is with the game warden now, or whatever. The, or you can give the game warden the, the contact information on the collar. Game warden will get in touch with the dog owner and like give him a written warning. So it's in the system. Yes. I warned him. The second time, he gets another warning. And I think the third time, they'll get fined. They'll get a ticket of some sort for uh, some sort of trespassing. I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you specifics, but I know that's how it is. Well, you know, we need to look up on it and make sure yeah. we know 100%. I don't want to be half assed about it. But all of our dogs are, all of our dogs that are experienced, because as we start dogs, of course, they're not as well tone broke. But usually, two tones. We they see they're back. going away, and we'll pull them off the track, you know, because it's just – I'd rather and avoid I, a whole scenario. There's so many people, they don't – I can't act. They don't want to fucking do – they, they're like, well, that dog's running track. I'm not pulling him – or he's baying a hog. I'm not pulling him off of it. He's doing his job. Yes, but you didn't do your job to begin with. Which is make sure he can do it there. Well, exactly, because <laughs> a lot of people – you cannot take a damn – a plot hound with tons of bottom to it to a 300 acre spot of land to go hunt it just i wow. mean yeah if he's rough and wants to catch him right there but if he's got to run track cold nose dog is gonna be a long run but yeah. anyway so february 11th here this one we can get back at it 100 percent. and I, I mean i'm i'm ready I'm beyond ready uh but there's there's still a lot of other stuff just beside deer hunters you got guys that rabbit hunt Got some bird hunters, squirrel hunters, which I mean, we we squirrel hunt with dogs. We love rabbit hunt too. So keep keep that in mind, uh, you know, and try to work with everybody. Because a lot of times, uh, I know a uh, good friend of mine, Jared McDonald. We went on squirrel hunts down south Alabama, and I mean, those mountain curves. Next thing you know, there's hogs busting up everywhere. Even though they're not even running hogs, they're they're treeing a squirrel. But we just run in a group of hogs or something. So, it's you know, if you work together, sometimes the most squirrel hunters or coon hunters or rabbit hunters they they call you and be like, "Hey man, I seen a seen a big boar hog across the road, or my dogs tried to run one, or they tried to bay it up or something." So. It's one of those deals where if you try to get along with everybody, it, it works a lot better than arguing and fighting all the time. And we as dog hunters got to stick together. Really need to stick together big time. And which one one problem that it is is all of us want to be right all the time. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever wants to say they're oh hey I made a mistake or I was wrong. And that's really yeah I mean I guess that's in anything, but it's if you run in dogs and it's not about the dogs then. I don't know, just different than us, you know, because it's about what the dogs are doing. So that's that's the main thing. And I mean, so, and and here where we're at, what are you doing? Luke's moving the camera. That's our camera guy, Luke. That's my, our other son, my, my middle son, Luke. He's fixing to graduate this year. Try to get him to sit in on the podcast with us too and talk to him. But he, I don't know, he's too busy chasing his girlfriend around, worrying about trucks and speakers and stuff. Every now and then, he'll go chase a pig with us. But back to what we were talking about here, usually February and March, it's about our coldest time of year. Uh, they get, it gets cold. I mean, the wind, it, it can be, it can be brutal. Yeah. Bad There's some little, yes, and that can that can work out to your advantage as soon as you get back to catching hogs because you know there's been a lot of traffic in the woods with deer hunters and other hunters and stuff. Uh, those old hogs, you know, they 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 know when people are coming. So one thing that we have around here, a lot of cutovers and pine thickets. Yep. When I say pine thickets, I mean like you know ten years or ten year old pines or less. Yeah, young young pines, they're they still hold that heat down real good, and them, and the hogs, it seems like they really like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know how many of y'all know about a succession of trees or plants, but it would be the second stage of succession canopy closure. Yeah. <laughs> For anybody that knows forestry, half ass, yeah, <laughs> and good and thick. Yeah, those those pine thickets, man, they they paid off a lot of times, like. Yes. Get on a real bright sunny day and that wind's blowing and it ain't but like twenty degrees. 
a lot of times they'll be laid up in them pines. They're they're in there rooting that old pine straw around, getting them grubs and worms and stuff. I guess, I guess that's what or, they're doing. I don't know. Cold, I ain't asking. When a cold snap, yeah, man, you're fast down. Speak no fear. Yeah. But uh, or like when you have some warm days, because a lot of times for us we'll have fifty degree days, uh, maybe even up to sixty degree days, and then a bunch of rain will move through, and so that rain it, it heats up the day before, and then. It's going to get windy with some rain and drop back off into the 20s and 30s, like Dad said. And a lot of times, that cause them to, to get in those pines that are real thick. And so, it just kind of helps shelter them from the elements. Yeah, they like and they like cutovers, uh, which they like cutovers at any time. Yeah, I mean. Real thick cutovers. Uh, the thicker, the better, because it creates like, like a shorter canopy, and it gives them a lot of room to hide. They feel comfortable. And I know we've crawled and oh, yeah. them, like to get into a pig. And when you're down there by the ground, I mean, it, it feels good. Yep. In the summertime, like you know, all the heat is being deflected. Yeah, it's by pushed the back canopy up. And, the and then they got all the dewberries, blackberries. Oh, yeah. All kinds of stuff. Plums. All kinds of shit's in there, too. We got that. And that's what we're touching on this this right here. And this, this whole segment is just different, different, like temperature swings, uh, tactics, tricks, whatever. I don't know what you call it. We just call it. We're talking about hunting. We're talking about hog yeah. hunting. Uh, it, it you know, like I said, this stuff right here, it's just stuff that's worked for us in the past. Yeah. Uh, and, and water in the winter is kind of like for the pigs, is the same as the dogs. Like water is just as important during the winter, if not more, than it is in the summer. P pigs use water more for the mud access in order to cool off. But in the winter, there's not a lot of rain at times, but then sometimes it rains for a week. And so when we're not getting a lot of rain, they're going to be on those creeks just going down there getting a drink because a lot of the grass and stuff is dead. And they're, and they're more eating mass and stuff that might not have as much moisture content in it. So you can still bust plenty of hogs on the creek. Yeah. You just got to be careful with your dogs because they get in that creek and then get out. And you can potentially run into problems with your dog getting a little cold. Yeah. Usually they do They do good. As long as they're not out there and it's too long. <laughs> And be careful for yourself too. Yeah, you freeze your ass off, get pneumonia. Yeah, that's for damn sure. I mean, that's that's one of the things. That's what's wrong. I've been I had the damn. I, I ain't gonna say I've been sick, but I haven't felt real good since we got back from Louisiana. Dude, temperature swings like insane. Last week would have been what January sixth, ninth, yeah. somewhere in there, about the ninth, I guess. We left here. It was around fifty degrees. Got to Louisiana, it was 30 degrees and falling, sleeting, trying to snow. The next day, it never got out of the, the high 20s with the wind chill. It was in the low 20s. Uh, the next day was a, for almost the same. It, it got up to like 40-something, I think, was the highest. But it, the wind was blowing, so it was cold the whole time. Then the next day, 70 degrees, right at 67, I think is what it was. was good. It was too hot to wear, did Yeah, you, you couldn't wear long sleeves or anything like that. And then it went to raining. And then the next morning, it started out at 50-something degrees. And then by lunch, it was back down in the 30s. It was, it was crazy. So, you know, it's one of those deals where if, if you're, you just think about your dogs being in that water and being out there wet and cold all the time like that, I'm sure it's got to affect them a lot more than we even know. But uh, back to what I was talking about with the with the deer hunting, and like Nate was talking about, we trap a lot. That that's our scouting ventures. We are constantly take every opportunity to scout. I mean, if you go to a property and you're bow hunting it, pay attention to everything. Which most of you guys do. I'm not telling y'all shit anyway. I mean, y'all already know all this stuff. But to, to some of the newer guys that are, are getting into this stuff, you know. Hey, keep your eyes peeled all the time. Keep your eyes peeled all the time. Because uh, you never know. You, you, it'll be some of the strangest places. You'll be like, damn, is that hog track? You know, sure enough, that's what it is. So, like I said, we're getting pretty close. We're about a month away right now. Yep. Ain't it? Somewhere, just a little yep. less than a month, yep. three and a half weeks yep. from, from us being able to just bust wide back open. So, uh, there's some, we like to try to get, our dogs prepped and ready. Like I said, we don't hunt them. So we've got what? And we've got a pretty long deer season here in Alabama as far as gun season. So we don't hardly hunt from 
uh, mid-November. So November, December, and January, we don't hardly run at all. We go to bait pens and stuff, so it helps some of the dogs. But uh, we we like to tune them up, for what we call it, just tuning the dogs up. You can do it with young dogs, old dogs, seasoned veterans, or you don't have to do it at all. Some of you guys are like, they don't do shit. They just get the dogs and throw and they get and the dogs go. Every dog's different. And we've got dogs that'll do that. They don't need nothing. They just have, they just ready to go. Some dogs, I think, the less we hunt them, the better. The they better do. they are, exactly. <laughs> and then we've had some dogs. If you don't hunt them for two months, they get out there and they're like, yeah, they're like like they're almost lost. But then after the first and second hog, then they're right back on it. Oh yeah, just, I don't know. It's it's crazy. Dogs are weird. They're like people. But Everybody's if you different. take, if you take that. You, Let's see. Well, I got some stuff. Uh, you could do like little mock hunts if if you're able to do that in your yeah. state. State laws will. Uh, or you know, like I said, young dogs. If you're getting them ready for season, goes back to some of the the tip, the training techniques and stuff. You know, drag a hide. Uh, a multitude of things. You know, if you can find a place where you know you're gonna get on some some pigs, some small ones. You know, be be prepared. Try to get that spot baited up. Uh, Get you some man these cell cameras, dude. That's changed the game. Yes. I mean, we we just started using them. We don't use them a lot, but I have a feeling that we will use them a lot more. We got a we just got so much stuff. We got so many places that we used to hunt all the time, nonstop. And they were so far away, so we never really used game cameras. Because I mean, hell, if we drove three hours. You know, we would have to drive three hours just to check the camera to see if we were going to hunt it. So we never even bothered with it. But now, you know, we we run Tacticam, and uh, it works. I mean, it, it, the it, new Reveal X. Uh, yeah, they're just a, a slight White little, Tails Alabama D Y yes. Outdoors get you some of that. Uh, with the with the, the Reveal up. was the first one that we had. There were a few just little errors here and there, but with the Reveal X, we haven't had any no. problems. The, the only uh, thing that we seen on the other one, I think, was the gasket. Yes. That was the main thing. Uh and it could have just been the one that we got. I don't know. We're going well, I'm yeah. I put it this way, I'm I I'm gonna get five or six more in the next week. Yeah. So and uh we're gonna be I switching over to the, the solar power just so we don't have to use yeah. power batteries and stuff like that. Well so we'll kinda keep y'all up there. It depends on, on where you got them and how much the batteries how many you go through and what kind of batteries, but uh you will save money with the solar panel. I'm telling you now, I know that because we'd be eating some batteries up. That's a bitch. But, uh, Dollar Gentle loves me. They say, here comes that dumbass. What you finna spend? $15 on some double A's. I mean, they last a good while. But yeah, a couple weeks. I think it takes 12 of them. 12 of them. Yeah. So. But uh, I mean, just as far as the efficiency wise, you can go look on your bait pile and you're like, okay, this boar hog's here right now. So I'm going to go throw the dog box in the truck and I'm yeah. going to go drop on it. Them. Depend, yeah, it depends on how far your place is from, you know. Yeah. There, I know a couple of guys that, which I, I mean, I don't hunt with them, but they're catching really big boar hogs, and I know some of them. That's what they're doing. I know that you know they they get that picture, come to the phone, they're like, "Hey, let's go drop." And I know a lot of guys give talk trash about it. They're like, "Man, that ain't really doing it." Look, I do it to the dogs here. I'm trying to catch hogs, man. Now, am I gonna take my my best season strike dog out there and dump him right there on it? No, I'd probably just take some bulldogs or something real rough and catch them and stop him right there. dogs and running catch dogs. Or yeah, we would do it like that. Um, and then, uh, okay, baits, baiting. This is one of my favorite things. I don't know why, because we bait all the damn time and we hardly ever get to hunt our bait piles. One problem is, is like what like we go too far in between hunts, too long in between hunts as yeah. far as for the baiting. But we know what we got. We know what we're looking yeah. at. And then we go with then Rodney, Vale. We'll get together with Rodney, and then we've got no then problem. Rodney. He'll be like, "Look, let's go down here. Yeah, well, let's go down here." I swear, every time our hey, pigs will be hitting the bait pile, and then we bring Rodney with us, and those pigs just they go do. We something don't bring else. him with us. We just go together. Hell, Rodney's taking us. Not half. Time. Yeah, he's my guy. Yeah, I have my private guide, Rodney Vale. So when we don't catch pigs, it's and he guides fault. on, he guides us on our on our spot. Yeah. He'll be like, "Look." I'm like, where you want to go, Rod? He's like, hey, hey he he's picked some spots several times. He's picked quite. A, he ain't good at I'll, nothing else. Really. I'll be like, man, but he's good at picking spots on where to catch a big I'm ass like, rank hog. We'll find a place we have never even seen a hog yeah. track, and he'll just be like, I bet they're we down got, there. You know, we <laughs> got, <laughs> and catch one. I'm like, oh, okay, Rodney, 
Get right, the we called a musk ox one time <laughs> in Carbon Hill. Rodney, he, he called his shot. And I almost got a grizzly bear one time. You got to be careful with Rodney. He'll put you on shit you didn't know was there. You got to watch him. He's a good guy. He don't... Uh, he don't really charge a whole lot to take you hunting, but he go charge you a little bit. Uh, definitely five dollars bush light, bush lights, a lot of bush light or Michelob, some snuff. If you're uh, gonna be a bear, be a grizzly. Yeah, great words, Rodney. Bell. Yeah. All right, so to the baiting part, they, I had to write all this shit down because I can't remember everything. That's why I keep looking over here at my little notebook, I'll and then I hell. cannot read what the hell I wrote at the time either. So. <laughs> Oh, my nose is finally going to stop it now. I can fucking breathe some. <laughs> okay, so we use, of course, sour corn. I started using rice bran, what, last year? Well, about about two years ago. Started using some rice bran, and they like it. They like it more at certain times of the year. Yeah. When it's real dead-ass hot in the summer, they hit it, but they don't hit it as good. I feel like I've noticed they like it a whole lot in the spring. I think mm-hmm. they're just because they're tired of eating so much corn. Yeah, I think say everybody's going <laughs> to corn them to death. Uh, old, old fruit, old bread, you can get any kind of stuff like that. Uh, we, You can take, dig it, dig your hole. Fish that you clean. They, yeah. They love fish. Oh, yeah, fish. Get you a mess of crappie or catfish or something. Dig a hole like that. Take too. all them fish heads and guts and throw them out there. You just take your post hole diggers or something or find your old stump. Pour them in there, let them work it over. Uh, some of you, like you new guys that are that are out there, and you want to get started in it, find you a good location. You can take if if you if you're not a hundred percent sure, which I, I mean, with, with the stuff, the technology we have now, you can pinpoint pretty close on where these hogs are going to be coming in and where they're going to be staying. Uh, I'm not going to say you can pattern one. I've never been able to truly pattern a hog, but I can get it pretty close. Yeah, my buddy. We, we know how long that it's going to take for them to come back. So. If you have to take two or three spots, get your post hole diggers, dig it down about two or three foot, fill it up with sour corn, make you two or three spots like that, and see which ones they start hitting. Leave a little bit on top, of course, mound it up. But when you dig that hole, those pigs have to get in there and work. You can put straight water on it. You can do Kool-Aid. You can do orange juice, vinegar. Any, we, we've actually done some, A video. some videos of oh, some of that stuff. That? And, you know, uh, which one... The pigs would like the most. Yeah. That shit's rough. Some of it's rough. Yeah, it's yeah, at times that it make you gag. Yeah, I taste a lot of that stuff. Don't do it. <laughs> it's rough. I'm telling. But uh, more on more on the hog movement, like Dan was talking about, uh, with patterning a hog. My friend Oliver Fleming was working with a a grad student at Mississippi State, and they did a lot of uh, radio collaring hogs and stuff like that, and they would go out and do surveys. And just find hog sign and stuff like that. And I believe this spring that grad student's research paper, his dissertation is up for review and stuff like that. So if I can get my hands on that, I yep. will put a link out so everybody can read it and be on some of the most up to date information on how hogs move and their patterns and stuff like that. Which I know some some people are they're probably not even gonna be interested in it. You know, they don't care, but to some of you uh, some guys, you know, especially the younger generation, You're they want to like me. They want to get technical with a lot of things, and, and it works. I mean, some yeah. of these some of these guys are putting some pork on the tailgate. Uh, another thing you can do as far as baiting stuff up goes, get you a, put your automatic feeder. Uh, but now, if you're going to put a, a feeder out just for hogs, you better beef it up a little bit because that red, you know, that little that seventy nine dollar or ninety nine dollar Walmart feeder, they'll tear that some bitch up. Well, you can get a fifty five gallon metal drum and order. The kit or go to Marvin's Build Supply, anywhere like that. A lot of times you can buy the the little DIY feeder kit. Tractor Supply, I think they might have some. Most co-ops do. It has a little motor and a spinner and all that for about, you probably have you a good feeder for 150 bucks with everything. I mean, a heavy duty feeder. Yeah. Um, Dude, saw, you can do that, and you can get them to where they're coming in. That'll help some, too. What? I saw a feeder on the Facebook group, and we used to do this quite regularly with five-gallon buckets. But he took, like, a, like a 20-gallon barrel and took a T-post and yeah. drove it and made a chain to it and drilled holes in it. So Just let them roll it. Yeah, let them roll it. It's more hog-specific that way. It's pretty cheap. So you can take a You can take a four- or six-inch pipe, anything from two foot to – Six foot long, ten foot, however long you want to make it, you can take that pipe 
can drill some half or three quarter inch holes all the way down through it, cap on both ends. You can put a cable through it. You can put a spring on it, however you want to yeah. do it, kind of like the shock absorber deal. Put it to a post or a tree, and the hogs will just push it around. And, and as it rolls, it you know, it lets corn out. It's it's an automatic feeder. We'll probably and do it works a video on good. how to build a couple yeah, different we'll feeders. Build, we'll build some of that stuff. We'll go over yeah. some trough feeders and stuff yeah. like that. Trough feeders typically don't get tore up as bad by pigs, but they love getting in the damn Yeah, they get, They'll get, get up them. in there and lay in them. So. Yeah. See, before, we nasty. couldn't we couldn't bait like we do now. No. Uh, that's what we are talking about with Alabama with the state laws and regulations. This is changing all the time. What has been just a couple of years now, we had the baiting bill passed. Yeah. Uh, 15 bucks, you bait them up. Hog and deer. Everybody I know baits them up. So if you ain't slanging corn out or something like that, you probably ain't going to have any deer on your hunting club. Not anymore. So uh, we was talking about tuning your dogs up. There's a, uh, there's a place in Mississippi. Uh, Contact Chris East. He's got a about a four hundred acre running pen, four to five hundred acres. And he's got hogs in there. I mean, you can you can stay the whole weekend, you can stay the whole week, you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, bring your dogs. I think the one deal he has a has a rate. Uh, you can contact him for that, or you can con- you can contact me, and I can put you in contact with him. However you want to do it. Uh, there's a rate for. I think it's four guys and 10 dogs is one rate. And then it's so much for each individual person per day and each individual dog per day after that. Now that, that those four men and dogs, I mean, like you bring your kids, you can bring your wife. It doesn't there's, cost you for them. There's a camp house. Yeah, there's, that's what I'm saying. There's a camp house there. You can stay in it. It's, uh, well, I love, I, I used to go there all the time and it's, we went, what November? Mm-hmm. I think we went November this year. We had a good time. Uh, we'll be going back again just as soon as possible. Probably Some small just... hogs. They educate them. Yeah, those hogs are dogged all the time. You know, dogs run them all the time. Uh, you think that they're in the, you know, they're in this what eight foot fence? You're like, yeah, that ain't gonna be nothing. Them hogs run. Them hogs run. I mean, if you have true bay dogs. It will be one hell of a workout for him, I promise you. And I don't care. I mean, even if you've got the, some of the best dogs in the country, some take, in there take them over. Yeah, there ain't there ain't just they ain't no just little pigs in there. There's some big hogs. But the only way to really to shut them down, r- real rough dog. But then again, once you catch a hog, you take and you put it in the holding pen, and you know, and it make sure that it's not tore up or or anything like that. Uh, like I said, you can just contact him. Or holler at me and I'll get you some contact info together for it. He's a he's a great guy. Uh he he's he's solid, man. It's it's a good place to go. Like I said, we we'll go. We'll we'll have we'll be putting some video and stuff up from there too. Um uh, we gotta go tune our dogs. Our dogs suck. Uh, they're not really that good at all. I mean, they we got one or two. They uh they they find some pork every now and then, and then we get kicked out of Walmart out of the frozen food section. Sucks, but that's just the way it is. So. What's some other stuff that? Oh yeah, over there. That's also where you can evaluate your dogs. Yeah, it's a pretty good that testament. Tune, yeah, that tuning up thing. I about left that whole thing out. Evaluate your dogs and see what you're feeding. Because some dogs, like we said, they you set them up for a few weeks or a couple months, whatever. Then you're like, this dog really ain't what I thought it was. And so then, you know, then you have to do the whole process, which, you know, I, the main thing I'm talking about is you having to call a dog. That's a very, very, very important deal to have a good package. You have to, you have to be specific with it. You have to pick them. Not all dogs are going to work out. Some and dogs each dog, are just good at sitting on the couch. Some dogs are good for you. Some, and they won't be worth the shit for me. And some, some will be make, great for me and not worth the shit for yeah. you. I mean, a lot of dogs that don't make it in the hog dog world become great yard dogs, great farm dogs. I mean, somebody that just lives an active lifestyle, like if they got kids and they ride, they have a lot of land, they ride around oh, yeah. fishing and stuff. We take a lot of people out on hunts. And so, like I said, tuning the dogs up. I'd rather, I'd rather take a day 
or two and go take dogs out and, and run them and hunt them, uh, do practice hunts, mock hunts, trails, whatever, you know, whatever you got to do to make sure that you're ready to go. I'd rather do that and, and see what I've got to work with because my pack is always changing and evolving. Uh, not everybody's just like that. I, I know I know guys that have the same four or five dogs or two or three dogs, and that's all they've had for several years, and they keep them. We run all rough, rough dogs, so our pack is changing all the time. We always have young dogs, and we always have – and we have new dogs coming a lot in the of scenarios that we run into because occasionally we get it to where there's a lot of pigs where we're at and we can just take real hot nosed dogs, rough dogs and go in there, bust a sounder, catch two or three. And then sometimes pigs get sparse. So you need one that ranges a little further and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Or then we'll get one big nasty one that shook us one time. And so we got to put some dogs on them with some more bottom. So we kind of, we have more dogs, but we can hunt more scenarios and be successful in that situation. Yeah. And if we don't have them, we usually know somebody else who does. So we'll be like, hey, we know where this big pig is. and Yep. Come join us for a hunt. Just let's, let's get together and let's get this pig, you know. That's right. And, I mean, so, like I said, doing the tune-up hunts and, and all that stuff is fine. But, you, you know, exercise is also important on these dogs if you're not running them. I know a lot of people that don't do it. Uh, if your dog's on a, 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 a stake and chain, a lot of times they're going to get exercise. But it's just like a human. Just because we walk back and forth, back and forth, does not mean that we're getting the proper amount of exercise. We're not getting our heart rate up for an extended amount of time. So that way, you know, we're progressing instead of just staying at the same level. So, I mean, we got, we got slap meal. Yeah. Uh, you can run your dogs, you know, get your, you know, if your dog, you can run them with a, on a four wheeler or by your truck, you can swim them. Yeah. You can do a multi multitude right. of things, flirt poles, spring poles, any kind of stuff like any, anything will help. A good diet. Make sure the dogs are, are, are fed good. Make sure high, all this stuff that we're telling y'all, I know y'all guys already know all this. Uh, some of you season guys, so but sometimes there's just one thing that you can add in your yes. toolbox, and so and it, it completely changes. It. And if we're missing something, <clears throat> that, hey, let me know. So let me know. This, so, yeah, something. give us some give us some input on it. We want yeah. to we want to interact with people, and I mean, just because you don't hunt the same thing that we do or the same way that we do or whatever, it's it's dogs. Yeah. We've talked to people that run that do falconry. We've talked to people that coon hunt. We talked to people that put their dogs down chimneys to get coons out for nuisance control. You know, we've, we've talked to all different, I mean, we, we, I've learned a lot of stuff. It's, yeah. it's crazy. But like I said, just exercise, good diet. It's just like a human. Try to keep your dogs in the best shape that you can. Just because, you know, a dog comes out and it's fat. Everybody says, well, that's a big old fat, pretty dog. Well, you know, that's also at the other end of the spectrum, you know, you really don't want that because that dog can't hang. You know, you can't put an 800 pound man in a hundred mile marathon run. It don't work. It don't work very long anyway. So, but whatever you're doing, just there's no replacement for common sense. Just do the best that you can do. Try to keep everything at, at the best capability that you're able to, yourself included. Usually, the first couple of hard hunts of the year or the first couple hunts of the year period for me are the hardest. We live in a lot of steep terrain. And after that, Hey, I get to going again. I've I get to a little to, better. I've been trying to start jogging about a month before we start hunting. Just yeah. so it's not as bad. That's right. And, so. uh, another, another thing, dogs are like people. Sometimes we wake up and we're just like, I have a bad day. <laughs> I'm just not feeling it. Exactly. And dogs sometimes do that too. So, you know, if, if they have a bad hunt, like I said, like my dad and I brought up, sometimes our dog, we've had dogs in the past that go out there and it's like, have you ever been hunting before? Yep. And some people would call in finished dogs. But then after they see that one pig or they or they get on a real hot track, they're like, oh, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm doing, yeah. Comes back alive. Yeah, they're just, they're all different. Yeah. 
uh, and that's the thing about it, especially when you have a lot of them, you got to deal with that. It's just like raising kids, you know, pretty much every one of them's different. You just kind of got to conform to it. And the yeah. hardest thing is you can't ask them what's wrong. Yeah. And they, we yeah. speak to we speak a verbal language and they speak body language. So you yeah. have to always keep that in mind because you can easily confu- confuse a dog on whether or not you're angry with them or not. And yeah. I, I've seen that, especially I've been guilty of it as a young man coming up and raising my own dogs. Yep. Like just coming out there and I'm not in a good mood with the, the dogs. They, yeah, they think they're yeah, they're, yeah they they think they're in trouble for something they hadn't even yeah. done nothing yet. So, uh, when when you go when you now that okay now we got seasons here pretty much and we're getting ready to go. You got your dogs and everything ready. Try to be prepared when yes. you go on a hunt. I mean, if you're just running right at you know right if you got your own farm or your own ranch and all that and you can hunt right out in the backyard, well that's that's well and good, but most of us can't. So, be try to be smart about it. We got so many electronics now that can save your ass if you get in the bind. So, I mean, there's really, you know, that's a big, big plus. Uh, there's a few little things that you get you a little backpack, a little day pack, whatever. Uh, man, I, I, most guys I know, that's what they, you know, they got a day some pack. Some water, some crackers. Here, some right there, you there. go, right here. Put you, you got you. Make sure you got a little first aid kit with you for you and the dogs. For you and your dogs, mainly for the dogs. Yep. Uh, water, some type of electrolytes. We always carried the uh, the Duravet electrolytes in a tube for like horses. Man, you could hit the dogs with a little bit of that when it's hot and humid. Put it back to them. Uh, liquid B12. And the older your dogs get, the more it gets important to make sure they're yes. properly hydrated. Oh, yeah, it does. The same thing with the human. I mean, make sure that the, the hydration is key. Uh, just because your dog come in and drink a bunch of water does not mean that he's hydrated. Uh, uh, his body still has to replace all the yeah. salts. That's why electrolytes are important because they're salt. And, and newcomers to this stuff, guys, you, a lot of you going to have to do a lot of hands-on stuff that you didn't have to do before. Uh, you dogs know, are athletes, trainers. Yeah, so if you're out in the middle of nowhere at two o'clock in the morning, that dog gets hit. You got to put him back together to get him, just to get him to the vet. Yeah. So there's videos out there from other dog men, from vets, different associations and stuff that can walk you through a lot of it. So try to do a little bit of research on that before you just go turn a bunch of stuff loose and have to learn the hard way or lose your stuff. The Benadryl. Yep. Keep Benadryl with you. Snake bites. Here in the South, we deal with snakes all the time. Uh, every year, somebody's dog's going to get hit. So, a couple of Benadryl can honestly make the difference, be, you know, in saving that dog's life. It can do the same thing for you. And I know for 100%. I, I mean, literally, I know if you get snake bit, I'm not saying it's a cure all by no means, but it can help you. Uh, it can help you. I, I like to keep some Zofran or Finnegan or something like that in our bags too for nausea. Like I said, it's a big deal, especially guys from where we're at, Georgia, Florida, Louisiana, South Mississippi, Texas, all those places like that with snakes, yeah. you know. So. And uh, back, back to the cut kits, I think Ed Barnes, uh, Tusker's Magazine, Yeah, I think on their website, I believe they have a, like a complete first aid kit and had been working on for a few years. Yeah. I think it's a little over $100. But it's, it's but it got covers all, all the bases. But now it's like everything you can yes, need it, to, it, and to these get you are to a vet. made by hog hunters. And I'm not saying the other kits are not made by hog hunters yeah. because they are. Like, I mean, that's just the one I Southern, know of. Southern Cross. Yeah. Southern Cross, they, they, they put together a great kit. Yes. Uh, you got Michael from uh, Hardcore Hog Dogs. Same, yeah. same kind I think of stuff. We bought one of theirs one yes, time. yes. Well, actually, I've had both, both of them. But yeah. honestly, I we wind up Ted so far. We've had yeah, we wind up putting our own stuff together because everybody likes a little something different yeah. in their in their arsenal. So, uh, like I said, Ed and them they hunt a lot. So when they, you know, they're putting a kit together, it it'd be something to really look into. Uh, not just the the cut kit. Ed is a established author. He's got a book out in pursuit of hog dogs. You need to check that out. That is one of the best reads that I've read in a long time. I mean, honestly, it's uh. And if you haven't subscribed to Tusker's magazine yet, get it. Do it. And Ed, get it. And Ed always does like spotlights of people. So if you have anybody can be in that magazine. If, oh yeah. If 
you and your buddies. If you're a hog hunter. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a hog hunter, you got to catch a pig or you ain't yeah. getting in it. No. But uh, so basically, if you and your buddies just caught a 600 pound boar hog, put some photos up, write a short story about it. I mean, you yeah, I want to hear about it. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's if it's a 200 it. pounder, if it's 50 pounds, I don't care. I just like to talk about it. Yeah. Talking's fun at times. Yeah, 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 I mean, but. No, they put yeah. It's it's a good it's a good magazine. I think it's bi monthly. Yeah, February issue. Yeah, I saw which where, they've got a, a a. I don't know if I know everybody on the staff, but I know it's Ed Barnes, Pat Lewing, Pat Lewing's pro staff, Ronnie Creek, from the world map. famous American Hoggers. Uh, I love that man. Yeah, funny. he's cool. And then uh, uh, Colby Ingram used to be. I thought he said Colby, he used to then be Gary, pro staff. Gary Gary Sliman, uh, Monica Wheelis. There, there, there's a whole That's multitude right. of people that, that, you know, I don't know if they still work on it together or at one point in time, but you'll see their name in the book and the magazine and stuff. So check it out. Get you a subscription to it. Uh, when you write it on there, when if you, if you fill it out, make sure that you put up there that, you know, you, Dixie Doggers podcast is where you heard it at, Ed. So when, anytime you get one, somebody says it, they got it. They heard about it from Dixie Doggers. Just remember Need a new knife or something like that later on down the line. I, you know, That's it, another thing. Ed Barnes oh, makes, makes some, some nice. knives. Yeah, he makes some good knives. I got one of his bar knives. They ain't going to uh, get one for $50, though. No. Well, I mean, they ain't no junk. I can but, tell you that I now. mean, you see the price. You see two zeros behind I it. I didn't have no problem with you're it. You're like, hmm. And then you pick it up and you fill it and you go, oh, yeah, this is 100% worth it. Shit, yeah. Here, take, take it. You can just give me this knife. Exactly. All right. So back to our hunting stuff. Uh we move it. We started talking about the snakes, so we're getting into some. So let's you know move it on along to the summertime stuff. Uh, try to be smart. What's some stuff that they can do, Nate, to uh, uh, to work this heat? Think uh, about where you think about where you're going. Uh, so main thing is anytime you go hunting, you need to let somebody that's not going hunting with you know yeah. where you're at in case you get stuck. In case a dog gets hurt or something. Or you get hurt. But you have other dogs that are stranded, somebody can pick it up. Just network with friends and family. Yes. But um, a lot of times, think about where you're going. Don't cast, if your dogs have a lot of bottom, don't cast them in the direction of land. If, especially if they're not tone broken, you can't call them back to where, you know, hey, there's 10,000 acres over there, but I have no clue how to get to it. Yeah. Don't do that. Access. Because, because say even if you're hunting at night and that dog runs over there and at night it's even worse to find your way around at times if you don't know where Yeah, if you don't at. know where you're at. Yeah. Then it's just it's complete screwed up at times. And that dog could bay that pig and bay it and bay it and the next thing you know the sun comes up, okay, it's eighty degrees. Then by lunch it's ninety five. Yeah. And then your dog could heat stroke. A lot of times that pig will end up moving to water, but why risk a good dog's life for a pig? You, you know, just don't do that. Yep. But that, I'd say that'd probably be the number one thing. Think about where this could potentially end up being. The end result. Yeah. Picture your hunt. How you technically? How you, yeah. Picture now, how stuff, you want it to go and stuff try will to happen unexpectedly. Oh yeah. But that's why you have cut kits and electrolytes, and you do all those other. Yep safety net measures in order to make sure your hunt's successful or you're just at least successful in your dogs. Yeah. Just don't just take care of your dogs. I mean they're doing all the work most of the time. Yeah. And they do a doubt. lot of work, a lot of them. So try to when you when you're doing it like he's talking about, knowing where to go and knowing where you're going in the end. Knowing your dog is probably the biggest key. Yeah. Exactly. If if you don't know that dog or if it's a new dog and you picked it up from somebody, It'd be a learning experience. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> don't don't take this long range cold nose plot or walker dog and, and turn him out on two hundred acres. Just that it, I mean, no. you can, yeah. but it's you're probably not going to be there very long. Uh, try to try <laughs> to be smart and safe in everything that you do. Uh, we like to try to we work with the weather, which I know most of y'all do too. Uh, I know a lot of guys cold front coming in. Hey, let's go get them. Snow's coming. Let's go get them. It's Wednesday. Let's go get them. You know, just like the hunt, but playing the weather does work, especially in the summertime with the humidity here in the southeast is unreal. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's it's more than the temperature most of the time. So 
early morning. When I say early morning, like 3 a.m. Yeah, dropping. Dropping at 3 and hunting until 7 or 8, that's about max. I mean, that's, animals, a, that's just, a lot of times that's as long as the dogs can go. A lot of dogs, not all dogs, a lot of dogs can just keep going. But uh, then you want to also keep in mind about with it being dry. Yeah. Summertime, you got a lot of dry weather, some. Take in, uh, before you drop that dog, wet his nose a little bit. And then from Basically, time to you time. You a lot on just dirt roads. Yeah, you like got that. a lot of dust. Wet his nose. Uh, I know some, yeah. some a lot of guys already know all that, but uh, if done. there's any other stuff that y'all know that will help yeah. their tracking ability, you know, when it's real dry and dusty like that, yeah, y'all let us know. places that are rocky, you have to worry about their pads getting to world. Yep. I mean, even if you have, if like just here in the south, say if your yep. dog was running down the side of the highway, he could burn the pad with his feet. Oh yeah, on, burn them off. Asphalt if it was hot enough. So, just sometimes you got to worry about that. So if it's super, super blistering hot and it's dry, you got to worry about the pads of the dog's feet because they'll they'll get sore. Oh yeah, real and, bad. I, I'd say pads of the feet are a lot of times the most overlooked thing because, like you said, all the briar thick and stuff we have, you get a. Briar in the pad of the dog's foot. It'll fest- oh, yeah. They'll, chew, they'll make it way worse than Yeah, they just keep on and doing you it. You can't hunt your dog for two weeks because you got to yeah. let it heal up. So. Make sure you got you a good cooler. Yeah. Uh, make sure you got water for your dog. A lot of people, they have a water tank. Keep in mind that water tank, that water in there is going to get hot too from time to time. Yeah, but you don't want to, if your dog's heat stroking. Yeah, you don't want ice cold water anyway. Uh, alcohol. Now, I got it. We're going to get into that back here. I got a whole section on that already. So we'll get to that in a minute on that. But Nate, so he's on the right path. That's where we're headed. But the, uh, get you, some, make sure you keep, you can buy the, the powder packs of Gatorade, Squincher, stuff like that. All those work. Pedialyte is probably one of the best body armor, uh, for yourself as well as your dogs. Uh, any of that stuff will work. Uh, if you're doing a lot of walk hunting or cramps, you walk in. You, mustard and pickle juice. You don't want to get a cramp while toting out a pig. No. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's awful. Yeah. Also, with it being so hot, be careful on the cut gear. Yeah. For your dogs, uh, which I know some dogs, or some people, you know, they want their dogs vested up, top to bottom, and that's good. That's that. There's nothing wrong with it at all. But at times, but at I would times say we can't keep our just like as that. many complications with cut gear as there. There's as many cons as there are pros when it's hot. I'd say it out. Say that after a dog get, yeah. catch a rank ass hog, that, that pig literally pig. fall down and die of a heat stroke. I've seen the dog do it. Or I mean, it never got cut. That pig has big tusks. I mean, he can hook that dog. That dog can't get off the pig. That pig's just sitting there chomping. Yeah. And so I would say, if you're going to run a cut vest on a dog, run the cut vest collar combo ones that are connected because it can get hung up in there yeah. uh, a lot of times. But it well, my, it's, I, it's extra, 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 yeah, extra, I think say it's extra insulation and winter, but that's what my main thing is on this is to each his own on the cut gear, do what you think, do what you Once need again, to do. Got to know your dog. But it's hot where we're at. So, and there's all the companies, they make newer stuff, they make lightweight stuff, more breathable stuff. So we're headed in the right direction. Uh, reviews and input are the biggest factors on making sure that products excel and get better and better if all you do is bitching about it and don't never try to improve on it or help improve on it then we're going backwards yeah. so uh like i said the main thing i wanted to touch on it was just just be careful on you know the time of day that you hunt uh like i said there's a lot of new guys they got a property and hey they got off work it they work night shift and they got off and, and they're ready to go run dogs and <laughs> You know, it's nine o'clock in the morning before they get loaded up, and here it is, August, July or August. Man, that's gonna be rough yeah. as hell on the dogs. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be headed home by nine o'clock. Oh, I want to be at home. Yeah. Also, for the heat and stuff like that, think about your dog boxes and or right. dog trailers and stuff like that. The solid ones, yeah, they got vents and stuff, but it is still hot. We got we got D rings or rings or whatever uh, on the side of our trailer. Or even on, you know, we take clip them to the back of the truck or or the tail or the, the bumper or whatever. Instead of leaving your dogs in the box, unless you have a summertime box that you know, like the, the old jail bar style boxes or or anything like that. But if you have a solid box, 
just be weary. Of, just be careful of it. You know, be yeah, pay attention yeah. to what you're doing. It's just like leaving them inside of a hot vehicle. You, know? you know, if we if we're we're traveling to and from, you know, it's a two hour ride one way or something like that. We'll, you know, we'll we'll do that, and then when we return from the hunt, we'll stop at the store and get a, a couple bags of ice and just lay a bag of ice on top of the dog box. Yeah. You know. And that just keeps the, you know, lets it reflect the heat and then any cool water and stuff like that, you know, run down the sides of it. I don't know how much it helps, but knock on wood, we aren't losing any dogs because of heat stroke stuff. Not on that part of it, you know. We we just try not to do it. Uh, but there's times where a dog starts heat stroking and it, it's unavoidable. Yeah. It happens. The dog um, won't come back no matter how many times you tone him. Or when you him. get there, he's already wore out. Yeah. He's already down. That's where we were talking about your day pack and keep some rubbing alcohol. Put it on the pads of the feet. Rub it on the belly. Down their back. Down their back. Down it will body. cool. It'll cool them off quick. Uh, there's a lot of things that can do that. It each Each scenario, you know, has its own way out. You know, sometimes you can just get that dog in a creek, cool him off, cool him off. Uh, a lot of places that have hills and mountains and stuff, our, we got running water all the time. Water's nice and cool, yeah. so it does help. But then again, sometimes you can it's also make him shot. Yeah, you can also send him in a shot. Uh, if that dog is bad, bad hot, bad, when I'm talking about he's dying, if his, tip, tip if his, his under, ears. If his underbelly is usually white and it's red. Yeah. He is too hot. Yeah. He, if he, his belly is red and he's, and I mean, he's, you'll know what I'm talking about. You older guys or you experienced guys, I should say, you already know what I'm talking about. Tip that dog's ears. It can save him. Uh, I don't think it hurts. It's, it's more along the lines for bulldogs, uh, catch dogs and stuff like that a lot of times because they're all vested up and they're doing a lot of the hard, heavy hitting. If that dog is in bad shape, and he ain't going to make it, or you think he's not going to make it, take about that much right off the tip of that ear. Just tip that ear, let that blood flow, and cool him down. You know, uh, there's a lot of old, old game dog guys that, that know a lot of that. Uh, I think I think Ed covers it in his book. Man, there's a lot of stuff. Hey, we should, hey we're going to do a, like a review on Ed's book too. We're going to, you know. Which I'm sure there's other people that have done it or whatever. We're gonna we're gonna share some stuff out of it with you. He's got some hunting stories. Uh, we've all been on him trying to get him to write a, a book about just hunting stories. So if he's if he's not gonna get on it, I think he said he was in, already started it. I think he had already started it. We were gonna we're gonna write a book about hunting stories and stuff too, but it it ain't gonna be near as good as Ed's. I imagine it's mine's probably gonna be a bunch of bullshit, really, because that's what I'm good at. So. You know, there was, those are some of the things that we just wanted to touch base on about getting ready for hog season or, you know, what we call hog hunting season. Uh, like I said, know all your state rules, regulations, and laws. Don't be scared to knock on the door and talk to a homeowner or a landowner. Uh, closed mouth, don't get fed. If you don't ask, you won't get no permission. You won't get no other properties. Not asking is being in the same position. Exactly. You're in but right now, now, don't go ask somebody else's landowner. Yeah, they'll be cut under. If you yeah, can. don't don't be doing that junk. No, we ain't gonna have that. If if y'all know anybody that does that, blast them, full blast. Let everybody know. Say this son of a gun would do you wrong, and that's what's gonna happen if you go behind somebody and hunt their property and them not being there, or you try to swindle it out from under. That's the biggest problem I think that we have in the whole dog hunting world is the properties in a lot of places are few and far between. So instead of working together, they try to work against each other and screw each other over. Uh, like I said, we, we talked about it before, you know, coon hunters, squirrel hunters, all these other dog guys, they'll, they'll call their buddy and say, Hey, can you come hunt this dog for me? Or they'll hire somebody to come to hunt a coon dog you know, for a month or two that they really don't even know. Most guys won't even let you. You ain't getting kicked a hog dog. No, you, you ain't getting that. And you damn sure ain't going over to my property because you're going to try to go over there and take it from me. Yeah. And the reason people are like that is because people do try to do those things. They do it. It, it, it sucks. It's Because usually it's the guy that got you started. 
You know, the the guy or or not the guy that got you started or the guy that you helped get started. Yeah. He goes right behind you and be like, well, it, I, I, you know, it ain't going to hurt if he loses one property. Yeah, he shouldn't do that. All he's got to do is call you and say, hey, can we go over there and hunt? Yeah. And, and most of the time he's going to be like, hell, let's load up. So, but, you know, if we, uh, the stuff that we covered in this episode, it this is strictly from what we know, our opinions. Uh, it does not mean that it's the gospel. You do things your way. We try to do them our way. We try to do them the best we can. We try to do them to, differently. Let us know. Yeah, so we can talk about it. Because yeah, we we could be doing this shit all wrong. Uh, you know, I'm literally. There like, could always be a better way. Yeah, if if you have a closed mind, nothing will ever get in there. And I will be the death of your uh, self growth. Yeah. So, all right. So that's on the hunting side of it. We appreciate all y'all, man. It's. Uh, Y'all just keep watching. We're going to go over some results from the last baying uh, where we were in uh, in Dallasville, Louisiana at the uh, hogband.com event, We, uh, which I know we got a lot of listeners now in the bay pen world as well. And look, guys, all the, the, the diehard hog hunters, man, all those guys down there, they run hog dogs. They got some damn good dogs. They all hunt. They every, Almost every person has invited us to come down there and hunt with them. Yep. Or wherever they're at, they're like, hey, y'all want to come down and run dogs with us? Yeah, they got a pen dog, and that's most of the time, that's all that dog does. But the reason that that dog is only a pen dog is because that dog is literally making thousands and thousands of dollars. You can't it, risk it. No. Why, why would you, I mean, honestly, why would you take a dog that's making you 20000 or more dollars? Why would you take him to the woods and just get him shit wrecked? And be like, well, I just, you know, measuring peckers, I guess. I don't know. I, anyways, it's retarded. Pride. I, I don't know. Yeah. It's, pride it's, it's, no, it's stupidity. It ain't pride. That's yeah. stupid. If you do that shit. Then you can stupid. eliminate your pride and dissolve your ego. Yeah. You can have some extreme personal growth. Yeah. In any, any aspect. Well, in the, bay, in the Bay Pen world has really changed a lot. Uh, yeah. There's several guys, like Jake McConnell, he's, he's really carrying it to another level. Randy Durrell, uh, then uh, Slade Trammell, he, uh, he's yeah Nixon, Texas, yeah out Nixon, there at Nixon. Band. Mark Bannister, all the guys out in Georgia. There's several pins out there. They they're just having a hard time with their testing and stuff with the hogs. Uh, they they got a rough go out there, man. Yeah. Yeah. I believe there's going to be a band in I February. So. That's what so what, far. Uh, what Tadpole like. said at Broughton Island. So yeah. Fingers crossed. They, I think he said we would, he would know something within a few days because I think this past yeah. week he had uh, like got with the state and they had come out and done testing. Yeah, I was going to say they're testing now, so, stuff, so maybe we'll get good results back. Uh, and for you guys that don't know what all that is, they test all the hogs to make sure that the hogs don't have any kind – they're not cured of any disease. So that way they, if your dogs come in contact with them, your dogs don't get it and it's passed on from your dog or whatever. I think the number one concern is brucellosis. Brucellosis, Which yeah. I think most hogs die yeah. with brucellosis yeah. rather than dying from brucellosis. Yeah, well, it, it's it's a thing that has to be flared up. Yeah, really. I think it's kind of like CWD. Like, yeah, there's definitely a, a potential for it to be awful. But yes. most deer that have CWD die with it rather than from it. From it. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. So what we had, uh, we we had a bunch of different events, and uh, let's see, our first event that was what Thursday. Mm-hmm. I guess we, we started Thursday. We had the 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 one puppy bay, which means there was one for you guys that don't know exactly how this worked. I did, at one time I didn't know none of the shit. So what it is, you have a puppy. It's a certain age and younger. Uh, and that puppy goes in there. It's one at a time. You have the one puppy, and then you have the two puppy, which means there's two puppies at a time. Baby, uh, all right. One puppy class. First place was Dakota with Diamond G Kennels. Uh, there was a three way split for I guess second. Be, be second, yeah. So so that's second, third all together. So it's uh, it would be Bo owned by Eric Mealy, Stupistitious, Rockin' R. Rico owned by Iron Spring Kills. All right, in the two puppy class, first place, Dakota. Yeah, but where's the other puppy? It just says Dakota on that. We got something off right there. 
I don't know. Down G, they just mopped them up. Yeah. <laughs> they, they won everything. Yeah, they won everything. And so, Okay, so we had Dakota up there at the first place with his partner. And I'm sorry, I, I didn't write it down. Somewhere I miss, missed that one. Second place in the two puppy class was Rico and Django, Iron Spring and John Adams owners. Uh, third place was Dakota and Toga, Diamond G again. And the one dog novice, which the one dog novice means that this dog is hasn't won uh hasn't won anything as an yeah, as an adult yeah. as a grown dog he's out of the puppy class so one dog novice uh we split first place with uh dnr hog dogs joshua wilson uh his dog hoss and our dog chaos they uh we went to what two or three bay offs i think we made off a couple of times yeah and in a bay off what it is is you have like you have so many runs, and then each one of those runs, the dogs are it's it's based on a ten score. Uh, they dock a tenth of a point for certain things like a loop out or a bad cross or drifting or nipping or whatever. There's a multitude of things, and we'll get into that some on another episode. Uh, but anyway, so if you have a hundred runs in there, and there are five do- five runs that are perfects. Those five have to go in there like a tiebreaker, basically, and they keep going until somebody messes up, or people decide to split. Or people <laughs> decide to split. So we kept going until I think uh, Josh's dog had a canine get loose or something. Yeah. So we just we split it with him. Great, great people. Uh, third place was Matador. Y'all need to remember in the bay pen stuff. Y'all, y'all better remember that dog. That's a rocking our kennels, Mister Mean Gene Reynolds. Yeah. Dude, that Matador was laying it down. Matador was getting rough. Boy, he, 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 he had his first catch up that week. Yeah, and you know, that's the thing, but he had never done that before. And I I like it. I'm sorry. I like the rough stuff. Uh, one of them kind of people. So, all right, in the old and young, first place, we had Earl and Dutton with Diamond G. Diamond G. Three-way split. For a second, with Diamond G again, Earl and Rip, Earl right. and Dakota, Pudding and Dakota. So, if you're at Triple R Bay Pen, and you got to contend with Diamond G. You got your hands full, yeah, because they got. I think at the moment a the, bunch of dogs that are uh, good. Uh, based off Hogband.com, uh, Jake McCano, uh put up like the, the points list. I th- I think in the top forty places, or I think it was I think it was like forty three dogs or something like that that had places and points so far. I think Diamond G owned eleven of them. Yeah, so they owned almost a, a quarter of the dogs that yeah. were on the board. It's they they definitely got it going their way. Uh, they have uh, it's a whole family, a whole, all of them in the family. Every one of them are out there running them dogs and baying, and they they get with it. And I mean, you know, when they're there, they're there, they're solid. And the one dog open, the one dog open is the pro dogs. That's the dogs that can't run out novice or amateur anymore. Uh, they split first and second with uh, it was camo and hand grenade. Camo owned by Kyle Horgan, hand grenade is owned by Arahula. And third place was Gorilla owned by Chad Cole for Cole Kerr. Kerr's. Yes. They uh, any any of those dogs I just said are at another level. I mean, they are they are damn good. They're they're really something to watch. Hand grenade had a run. That was, it was probably one of the top. It's in it's in my top few runs that I've seen in the past five or six uh, years. I was an athlete. He he was getting with it. He was getting with it. You know, I, I'm a goose fan, of course. An but, honorable mention for the one dog open would be uh, Capone. Capone. What is, what, what, I don't remember his owner's name, but I remember watching that dog's run because we bought his Calcutta mm-hmm. in the uh, the Bay off Calcutta, and at one point this dog was coming around the rear of the hog and the hog turned to him and it had him almost pinned against the wall. And this is where the wall at this hog pen trans- or goes from plywood to wire. And the pig like wolfed him and tried to like scoop him up and the dog ran on the wall on the wire, put a foot on the pig and jumped down and never broke eye, like ran up the wall. Yeah. With- it was it was some impressive work. I yeah, was it like, looked like one of the MMA fighters running yeah. that damn cage up a drop kick. Yeah, it was impressive. 
All right, then we're going to go to the one dog amateur. First place was Reba on my Dirty Dog Kittles. Second place was Lloyd. Diamond G. Diamond G. Uh, third place was Lynn on by Arahula Pound. He got some fine dogs. Yes. And in the in the amateur, the amateur, uh, basically you move up from the novice to the amateur to the pro. Uh, the, then we went to the two dog novice. First place was Sam and Kelly with Diamond G. Second place was Abel and Kuyon with Hellhounds and Code Red. Uh, third was Hoss and, and Oki Ann. DNR Hog Dogs and, and Ray Farms. All right, with all of those pairs right there, top of the line. I mean, they they didn't even look like novices. They were. I think it was that Abel's dog first time ever being hauled to a big. It was his first time. There, there's some what, friends Lulu of ours. And Jared said. Yes, uh, uh, Amber or Lulu Finley and, and Jared. Yep. Finley, they they own Hellhound Kennels, and that Abel dog we ran with him, and I mean it was a. He's a good dog. He, he, like I said, that's his first time being hauled. And when you come in second out there, how many runs was it? Do you remember? Uh, in the two dog novice? 70? 70, 72? In the two dog novice? I thought it was 138. Yeah, that, that was two dog open. This two dog open was all day Saturday. Oh, yeah, that, that was a Sunday. Right. Yeah, that was, yeah, it was. It was crazy. Anyway, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of pairs of dogs they had to beat there's out. There were 500 runs that weekend. Oh yeah, Jake. Uh, I should have got the info from Jake. That's not see. even including bails. Yeah, to see exactly how many paid entries that come through there. And if that, you know, what we're talking about paid entries, you know, of course, is however many times somebody paid for their dog to run. You're allowed to run that dog a certain amount of times. Uh, you can when you run a run, you. You can buy your option, which means it's kind of like the Calcutta deal. You're betting on your own dog or bidding on him. So each one of those runs is anywhere from 60 to 100 bucks, pretty much. And you're talking five to 600, 700 runs even at 60 to $100 a lick. That's the kind of prize money you're dealing with, with a you know, 70% payback. Yeah. Uh, it ain't bad. No. There ain't no doubt. And then, uh, so Saturday was, was that's what that's the big event. Saturday's the yeah. two dog open. Uh, that's where all the pro dogs are out there, and it is a it's some up and comers too. Yeah, you got some you got some dogs that are really trying to push their way to the top. Uh, you got some dogs that are trying to hold the top. Uh, there was a there was a let's say we had a tie for fifth place because see it goes out five places there in the two dog open, which is the pros. We had Zeus and Camo on by John Smith. He has some damn good dogs, really good dogs. Uh, Rango and Earl, Dirty Dog and Diamond G, they tied for fifth. All right, then fourth place, we had Iceman and Clyde, Ray Farms and Jim Cantrell. Miss Cantrell has been there, I mean, ever since I've been coming, but she's been, she's a, she's a statue in, in the hog band world. Uh, her dog, Clyde, is, phenomenal phenomenal i mean like it just like with mr miss ray and then miss Teresa's dog iceman it's yeah i, I think, think you said they're brothers i believe the, right, the randy randy i think randy said they were brothers i believe so uh, they're, them dogs are badass i mean they're they're consistent yeah. that's the thing it's like they're not they're not just they don't just win but it's Last all October, the time. Last October, uh, Iceman, I think he placed in the two dog open. I think he might have won the two dog novice, though. Yeah. No. No. He wouldn't be running the novice. No. 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 He. It was in the in the cup. Yeah. It was in the because see they had the two dog novice, the two dog open, then they had the two dog cup, which is you know that's the. Best of the best, basically. It's two hundred dollars an entry. Yeah, two hundred dollars a hit, two hundred dollar entry fee to get in that one. All right. Well, anyway, back to the two dog open. There was a tie for first. What well, well, we had third place was Charlie Brown and Rip. They were hounds, dude. Yeah. That's some of them hounds was getting them dogs worked their asses off every time that they had it. OTC and uh. Oh man, what a code red, code red, code yeah. red, code red, and, and then you had. A tie for first place. All right. It was Max and Goose. Yeah. Had Max and Goose tied with uh with Cowboy and Goose. Yeah. So 
it, you know, so I guess Randy decided to split with him. Yeah, himself. Split with himself. That Which Max guy. and Goose won the two dog open last October yep. well. Max that look, Goose is a is a great dog. I mean, like literally you know, I Max It's also a great dog. Dude, that's uh Mr. Troy Carroll's dog. Yes. From Florida. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, he's from Florida. What, what is? I think his kennel name is Rockstar Kennels. Yeah, I, look, I believe so. That Max dog, that son of a gun right there knows what to do. He will flat out put a bay in on a hog like it ain't nothing. I mean, you know, a lot of times, it, it, you know, like in the the episode we just done with Randy Darrell, he's the one that owns Goose. That's what he was talking about, hustling your pairs up, making sure you pair your dog with the right dog. Because you can pair it with a dog that it just doesn't work. You know, uh, a friend of ours, J.D., well, shout out to J.D. Terry. He's He's got a damn good dog. And uh, we paired him up with Chaos in October, and they just didn't really work that good together. Yeah. But now Buster is a damn good dog, solid as it gets. The chaos is too, but they just didn't click. You know, they wouldn't, didn't, wouldn't fight and crazy. It just, I don't know. It just wouldn't, they just yeah. didn't work good together. So it's one of those deals where now maybe next time we pair him, we pair Buster with, with Junior or, or something else, you know, maybe try to get him, see if he works out better with a different dog. It's it's imperative to, to make sure that you get your dog with the right dog. Yeah. If you're going to, you know, if you're two dog. So. But anyway, we just wanted to give a little recap on that. I uh, want to give a shout out to oh. a lot of the people that we met out there, some new folks. But then we also had a lot of people that we met the last time we were there. One of them was Snotty Graves. Snotty Graves. Let's talk a little bit about Mr. Snotty. He's got an old dog named Bull. Big Bull. Took the title belt. He took the title belt. Stripped it from Goose. He stripped it. Yeah. Randy had to put it on him. Yeah. He took that old title belt, swung it around him. I think he was rubbing. I think he was rubbing on Snotty's ass a little bit. I don't yeah. know. You know, it, it's one of them deals where it's, I know it's a bittersweet thing. You know, I, think I don't for, think it could have went to a better no, person, though. No. It, it, Snotty it, is just one of the most not, he's cool chill as, guys he's cool I've ever here. met. Cool I don't think I've ever seen him not smiling. He's just sitting there, just got his sunglasses on, smiling. Just chilling, just, just chilling. chilling. And then we had the uh, in the two dog cup. Goose got stripped again. <laughs> I think Poor. Goose and Cowboy had the two dog cup from yeah. last October. Yeah, uh, Demon and Sequel. Uh, Russ Bright. Yeah, R and A Kennels. They, uh, uh, I believe. Russ I believe give Russ give uh, Randy so much hell all weekend. I mean, you're talking about a hog band with a heckler. Yeah, I think we should that have was, a, a trophy to the best heckler. And, and it go Russ. It would have went to Russ. He, he, <laughs> he was on old Randy. I'm talking about wearing him out. Russ, good job, buddy. When, like when I said, Max, I, don't, I don't really know you much. But, I, I you know, we're going to get to know you more and more because, you know, I can get on that. Anybody that can talk shit that good, we need to be friends with Yeah. Him. <laughs> hey, buddy, he, hey, the guy, he, he, would, he had this. He could back it up. He had the dogs there to back it up. <laughs> had the money to play with. Had the dogs to play with. He come in there. He showed up and he showed out. So, you know, we're 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 headed in the right direction with it. We just need to get some more. We need to get some newcomers to the to the sport. Some some true dog people that understand. Uh, I challenge you to bring at least one person to the gate when you come. You know, that's what we've been trying to do. I had three people, that, and they, they're all, none of them live here. These are other other folks. Uh, then, Nathan, you had three or I four. I, yeah, four. That, that showed some people that, that went to go to John college. Brown, uh, his, his mom yep. and dad and his sister, they all came. Yeah. I think his mom loved it more than anybody else. Yeah, there. she was really interested. Oh, yeah. She was I mean like she watched She was every, like, I'm gonna bring the camper. I love camping. <laughs> she she watched every second of it. There yeah. like I said, there were so many new people at this one that we met, uh, which like I said, we're headed in the right direction. Spectators Rock, were Rocky us. Birch. Yeah. He showed up with some of his catahoulas and, and they done really well. Uh Rocky he actually lives in Alabama. Yep. Uh, hopefully we're going to get together and do a little hunting 
once we get, you know, once season gets going good, deer season gets out of the way, we'll get together and, and go do it. Uh, his son, his son really, I mean, he was really into it. They were all over. He was like, that's the guy that does the podcast stuff. So, Rocky, you know, it was cool. when you're watching this, tell your son that uh, next time we're there and we're setting up recording, I want him to sit in as a as a guest. You know, he can uh, he can sit in with us and give us a little play by play because that's what we're gonna start doing at some of the events. Uh, we're wanting to try to find some some other events as well, not just the bay pen. Like if yeah. you know where there's a coon hunt, uh, big squirrel hunt, rabbit hunt, whatever. It doesn't matter if there's a hog hunting competition. Uh, let us know. We want to try to network with other people and try to get this, keep our sport built up, but do it in the right way. I mean, posting videos and pictures and stuff, we're 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 opening ourselves a lot. Yeah. Uh, we we can be very vulnerable, but at the same time, is if we vet everybody that we try to contact or that we come in contact with, and we try to make sure that they're the right people for this, you know. I think we can we can make some big moves with it. Uh, like I said, Uncle Earl's is coming up March twenty first through the twenty seventh. Through the twenty seventh, it's a whole week. Uh, it's like ten times bigger than the one we just went to. It's they've got. More, I think they do. There's so many to, vendors. Uh, there there'll be. I think they do over a thousand runs. I know. I oh, think yeah, it's yeah. closer to two thousand. Yeah, it's it's, it's a lot of runs. They. And it's like I said, it's a full week long. Yeah. So uh, they'll have a lot of vendors. So show up. It's in around Winfield, Louisiana. Uh, you can get on hogband.com or Uncle Earl's. All you got to do is punch that in on your little smartphone there and it'll, 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 it'll bring it up to you. Uh, y'all come out, visit with us. Come see us. We're going to have our stuff set up. Come by and holler at us, sit in, talk about dogs, talk about hunting, talk about fishing. Talk about whatever. It don't matter. Uh, the only thing is we don't do a lot of editing. So, you know, try to try to be as, as kosher as you can about stuff. Don't incriminate yourself on any yeah. shit you don't want to get in trouble for. Your public image is what you make it. There you go. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Like I said, once again, we're back here at the shed. We appreciate y'all. Let us know if there's anything that we can do to improve. And what y'all would like to see us come up with, to work on, to discuss, to talk, or whatever. Uh, I know some people were talking about how long the episodes were on some of the the bait pen stuff. You know, it's not for everybody, so just let us know. Let's do it in parts. I Digest tell it. it. It's exactly. like reading a book. You don't read a book all at once. You read chapter by chapter. Yeah, because there's a lot of stuff that we want to cover, and we're not turning out episode after episode after episode. You know, this has been much just to get to episode 19. Yeah. So if y'all, if y'all want to have an episode every week, y'all let us know. There'll be a little shorter episode, but more frequent, you know, just, just let us know what, what y'all want to do. And, uh, y'all just holler at us and make sure that you subscribe, make sure you follow us, make sure you hit us on every social platform that we're there. All the links will be in the description. Yep. That, if that, you're on YouTube. I, exactly. And if you want to get Dixie Dogger's hats, Dixie Dogger hats, T-shirts, Links long for all shirts, that are in the description as well. Hoodies, stuff like that. We got it started now, so it's up to you guys to get it. We have a Patreon account set up. Y'all hit that up right there, and we're going to send you something. Y'all get some behind-the-scenes stuff. So, All right. We out, man. We'll see y'all. See ya.